What's going on everybody? It's your boy Cesar and we are talking about BitFarms and CleanSpark. BitFarms at the request of Shareful and CleanSpark at the request of Zihan Wang. I hope I'm pronouncing that pro uh, properly. I don't know if I am, but we're going to get started with BitFarms. Looking at BitFarms here, yes we have higher highs, yes we have higher lows. I would very much expect that in the, uh, the sake of the trend, we would probably come down and form another higher low coming down that's anywhere from about like a dollar thirty maybe a dollar fifty somewhere around there um, so some fibs on there all-time high to cycle low got your 382 coming in right around a dollar thirty dollar thirty two that would make sense previous areas of resistance become support that would make sense let's take a relative fib low to high here rejecting nope you're not rejecting anything sorry 382 right there at 151 150 going a little bit below that what's a little bit below that that 130 area that would make sense as well let's take a more relative fib even okay this time you are rejecting the 236 one 154 at that 618 area 140 yeah I would say 154 at a minimum is where I think you're going probably you do go pretty close to that 130 area but you might not hit it you might you might stop out at like a dollar forty that's possible but lower nonetheless could you go up from here a little bit sure maybe you could looking at the daily the RSI does look like it's in a downtrend lower highs lower lows right rejecting the 50 area you could come up a little bit more and still maintain this kind of downtrend you know what I mean like you really you could come up a little bit more sure but I wouldn't be uh, too shooken by that right shaken if it goes up it's still just a lower high so um, but I would expect lower prices nonetheless over the next month two months month and a half something like that that's bit farms let's move on to clean spark Zihan Wang if that's how you pronounce it man um, your request was how is the price gonna look in May so let's do this May and that's the end of May, essentially, right? Oh no, there it is, right there, right, 31st. Wow, there we go. So how's it gonna look in there? You know, well, we're probably gonna do this and then it's gonna go like that, so probably, so no, I'm just kidding. That's, I, I really don't know. Um, if we can kind of assume by looking at past results, May would be the month after the halving, not even a full month after the halving, right, until the end of May or at least the middle of May. So if we take the previous halving cycle that we had, which was in 2020, which was in May, um, you know, by June, if, if, if we had our halving, I think it was May 11th, was this week here, right? We go to June 11th, the week of June 11th would have been here. We were really moving sideways. So really a better question to ask might be like where do I expect prices to be around the halving and then a month from there we probably do consolidate we're probably not going to do anything exciting I've been calling for that for a while um, hard to say month of May I would assume we're lower than we are now in price I would I can be wrong on that absolutely I can be wrong um, before May, I would think that we are we see prices below six dollars, potentially even below five dollars before May, maybe even before April. Uh, I want to say by May we're still probably going to be below seven dollars. Is my thoughts genuinely? It's hard to do time analysis, man. It's it's really easy to do price analysis. I mean, it's not really easy, but it's it's far easier than doing time analysis, right? And you're asking me to do both here. Um, I would think by May, we're still below $7. So we're still below this line. Absolutely, by May, we could be below $6 even. But I'm less confident on that. I don't want to bet on that. But let's just look real quick, right? Like this last time here that we found our low, it was October, the second day of October. That was the beginning of this week. We didn't move out of this range until November 20th. It was well over a month, right? 
let's assume we find our low around the halving, maybe a month before the halving, right? So like March 18th, somewhere in the middle there, March something, whatever, like that. We move sideways for a month. It could be April, and then maybe May we do start moving up again. Maybe, you know, maybe we find our low somewhere around like $5, maybe. Maybe it's at $6, I don't know. Um, I, I do expect that we will at least go below 620. I very much do expect that we'll even go below $5, but I can be wrong on that. Um, find our low around the middle end of March. A month later, we're still there. And then, and then come t toward May, we might be starting to move out again. Even though, yes, the last cycle we did, you know, move up, we had a different kind of dynamic, didn't we? Because May 20th or May in 2020 over here, we were moving up right? We were actually moving up into it. Here we're moving down into it. Yes, we're in an overall uptrend, but we're moving down into it. So different kind of areas, different kind of RSI and like relevance. There's really not much to go off of. So oh, it's really hard to say, man. I'm caught, I'm caught between saying that we could be under seven dollars by May or maybe we'll actually be near these prices that we're at now by May. After doing some deeper thought, man, and I'm, I'm not trying to be confusing. It's confusing me, okay? After some deeper thought, we might be above the current prices that we have now in the month of May. Maybe not by the beginning of May, but maybe sometime in the month of May. We might be above these current prices. But we might not. We really might not. It's very hard to say. I'm expecting something like this to happen, right? move down somewhere in March, like around there, and we might like consolidate for a little bit, and then and then we'll probably start to resume our, our trajectory upwards. I mean, we might, we really might not be above these, uh, like even above $7 by May, it is possible. But I do think we're gonna, you know, something like that, more or less, and it kind of fits with this like look here, right? Like it kind of fits, I don't know. I can be wrong though. I very well could be wrong, so. Watch it just go straight down from here and then straight up. Who knows? Um, nobody knows the future, but I do expect Bitcoin to go down over the coming months, month and a half to like two months, something like that. And uh, with that, probably uh, mining stocks as well. So spend a little extra time on that because it's a very specific question. It's hard to answer, and I try to do it to the best of my abilities, but I gave you like two answers. The first one, I'm not as positive in believing as I was when I whenever I first said it. Um, though it's, you know, both answers are very real possibilities. Both answers are very real wrong answers as well. Like it's, it's really hard to do time-based analysis. What I, what I feel most confident in saying is by May, we're probably going to go below $6 with the potential to even go below $5. But in May, harder to say, man, probably above $6 by May. Maybe below seven, maybe below eight. It's hard to say. Maybe above. But if you guys like the video, you like all my maybes, hit that like button. Subscribe to see more. I do think Clean Sparks going down in the more immediate term. Um, rejecting this 50 area, looking like perfect rejection off of this like lower highs area, right? High here, high there, lower highs all throughout. Yeah, just looks beautiful. If we do go up a little bit more, don't be, uh, don't be feeling the FOMO. Don't be swayed. Rejecting the 0.5, it's not a good look. Closing below the 382, two days in a row now. Very much believe that we're going to see extensions off of this. The minimum extension. For those of you who watched this whole video, who stayed, you're getting the real rewards here because this is the this is probably the best bit of information that I can give in the more immediate time. Is we're going to see five dollars and eighty cents to five dollars and eleven cents sometime in February. Probably the first half. Probably. Um, if not the first half, I mean, I, I would assume by the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense to me. But who knows? I can be wrong. And just because I'm, I'm down here, that doesn't mean that we'll be down here by the 20th. Maybe we only go to 580, but 580 at a minimum, 511. I do plan on taking profits off of my put once we're below $6.20 even though I expect the price to go down here. I'm just not messing with it. I will be at a very, I'm already at pretty decent gains right now, man, but I'll be at a very solid bit of gains down there. Then I can get my money right. I can get my orders placed to buy some stock in it, you know, and maybe mess around with some other stuff as well. But 
I just want to get my profits and, and take it out. You know, I'm not I'm not going to be too too greedy with it. I already feel like I'm being greedy enough. Um, I very much could have sold this low down here, kind of kicking myself in the pants for it because you know it would have been a good play, but. Um, I wasn't so confident in this being the low. I did think we had a little bit more to go. Very confident in this being the high, though. So it probably would have been a good play retrospectively. But but that's why even if it moves up, even if you if you you had a decent bit of cash down here, you're still in the green here, but you have a little bit less now. You don't play the game because if you're just patient, it'll come back to you with a magnitude higher. So I'm just being patient, waiting to take profits, and I'm not going to mess around with it next time. Um, and I'm going to be completely honest. I might, I might actually take profits because I am very certain that we're going to see this one two seven two hit. I might take profits below six dollars. I said below six twenty, but maybe below six dollars. I'll look to take profits, but um, closer to this area because I really do expect that we'll go there. But, but that's about it. I'm up in the air with it, man. We'll see how I feel. I'll let you guys know whenever I take profits. Of course, I'll let you know when I buy. I'm very transparent. And I'm very upfront about that kind of stuff, um, and I'll let you know. None of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Yada, yada, yada. Hit that like button. Subscribe to see more. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.